Hey everybody, welcome back to the final take, season number two. We got a new place, we got new furniture, we're moving up on the world, what can we say? <laughs> Let's see what we have on the plate for you today. Yeah, Alright, so on the new episode of the final take of the new season, we're going to be reviewing Oliver Stone's new movie, Wall Street Mind Never Sleeps, Easy A, and we're also going to be telling you about our trip to the Toronto International Film Festival, where we saw Ben Affleck's new movie, The Town, and Danny Boyle's new movie, 127 Hours, at the world premiere. Also, we are going to have a classic review from director Carol Reed, and we're going to tell you about a movie that you really, really do not want to see this weekend. Basically, there was no point in seeing this movie at all. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Greed is good. Now it seems it's legal. Because everybody's drinking the same Kool-Aid. But sometimes it's the only place to stay sane and look out through those bars and say, is everybody out there nuts? It was 23 years ago when Oliver Stone released the first Wall Street, which I felt really brought out the essence of the Wall Street market at the time. Now comes along his new film in 2010, Wall Street Money Never Sleeps. And how was it? Is it better than the Wall first Wall Street? Well, not for me. I love the first Wall Street. But this Wall Street Money Never Sleeps does bring a new, a new context, which does make it a slightly level above the typical sequels we see nowadays. It stars the ubiquitous Shia LaBeouf playing Jacob Moore, one of the, you know, basically replacing the Charlie Sheen character from the first Wall Street. He's building himself up as one of those amateur Wall Street uh, go-getters, basically. Oliver Stone also adds a great dimension to Wall Street Money Never Sleeps. So we had a, a brief, unfortunately a little too brief performance of Frank Langella who gives a great dimension to, to kind of the, the inner greed that's going on in the Wall Street market, which we've seen before, but he also adds a different element because he almost personifies this sort of lingering uh, animosity that goes on. Are we going under? You're asking the wrong question, Jacob. What's the right question? Who isn't? Granted, I will note, Oliver Stone has always been terrible directing women. Like, it's same within his films like W, the uh, Laura Bush character was, was not, wasn't good. Same with the Wall Street, Daryl Hannah wasn't good. It was complete placeholders. Same thing here goes with uh, Carrie Morgan playing Winnie, who's a, the fiancé for Jacob Moore, Shia LaBeouf's character. And she is, she's just one of those characters, you know, who throws remote uh, controllers across the room and is always screaming and crying, and it's very histrionic. But... You do get past that because Wall Street is, works for most of it for me because it's using a context on the financial crisis of 2008, which does create a more patient pacing. Some might call that slack, but I thought it was just a slower build because it's explaining very despondent times. So people are trying to be greedy, but it's like greed is expiring, but yet it seems to be legal now. So I found that really fascinating. And if you also look at the Gordon Gecko player played by Michael Douglas, who basically runs a show in every movie he's been in, like the, previously in Solitary Man, he ran that show. Uh, here he's playing, you know, Gordon Gecko, but th the inter what's interesting is Gordon Gecko is a very vulnerable character, so we, our approach to him is a lot different. And some might consider him a sweetie, but I think the whole point Oliver Stone is making, and he's supposed to be reserved, he's supposed to be kind of, you know, the inferior, and, and it's that whole build. The ending, I will admit, is essentially garbage. It, it goes against the ideas and doesn't reflect Oliver Stone's idea of Wall Street, which is basically, it's, a, it's all about propriety, and it's all about basically gambling. Overall, for me, it's, it's enough for me to say see it because I really like the performances. I love the context to it, and just putting those together, it's not it's not great, but I do like it. I would say see it. Yeah. Well, you mentioned in your review that there, there's a slow build and that the ending is crap and that, that he's very bad at directing women and that all adds up to a bunch of nothing. So, so you say see it. So I say obviously a skip it to Wall Street. Oh, this, come movie, on. this movie has some of no. the worst pacing, no. like for like for a sequel of this kind, where everything is supposed to be in the. I'm fast sorry, it's not explosions, Jason. Uh, uh, yeah, well, sorry, there's no explosions. You know what? Like, it's just. Gordon Gecko doesn't have machine guns. Here's the know? thing about this movie. This movie is simply too little, too late. There is not enough interest. There is not enough no, fascination no, 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 with the subject matter. We have done this. This is a reach. Of everything no, that happened no, in 2008, no, 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 we don't no. need to see anything like okay, this. Okay, I will admit it's not it's no up in the air in terms of its emotional core, but Obviously. what the film I think is doing, it's a lot about character. It's a lot about putting characters in their environments, which was what Wall Street was about. But what my point is, is that it's a different context. You're, they're dealing with different things, and the reactions, the base of the characters are now at the bottom and building themselves up instead from the from the original Wall Street, they were from the top, building yeah. themselves down yeah. by the end. And watching that, I don't know. 
I, some people might not find it fascinating, but that's something that's interesting to me, and it's not like a documentary, because documentary is about explaining information to you, but he's, it's a dramatization, obviously, it's a movie, so it works, it's, it's entertaining no, for me. No, this, the, the movie has such a mood problem, like in one scene will be something, and then, move, and then in about two seconds it'll change to another mood, and you can't grab with the flow of this movie, and therefore the result is a plodding movie that just cannot decide well, yeah, what direction it wants to take. No, 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 the thing is, it's not about, your, uh, you're caught up in the plodding elements, it's not about the story, of it. I mean, no, the story is going to be the same. It's about the it's about the game. Like as as Gordon Gekko said, it's not about it's about the game. That's what Wall Street's always been about. It's about the rush, and that's what he's gonna. Like if you look at the transitions that he's been using, like very it was very linear and simplistic the first Wall Street. That was really good. Whereas now there's some really cool transitions, like Irish shots, and like you, you get that sense of technology increasing, but yet people's status is decreasing in the market, which is I. That, there's a cool mishmash going on with the direction and the, the actual element of the game that's kind of changed, I think. Well, the game they're playing is Monopoly, and quite frankly, you get bored of that after a while. I mean, just Monopoly. I, I know, well, I, I like Monopoly too, but only for a certain amount of time. After a while, it just gets so boring. You just you just can't stand anymore. And also, I, I will agree with you that the Frank Langell character really cuts to the core of what Wall Street is. I was liking that a lot. I was liking how some of the characters were put in various situations, but then those situations added up to yeah. nothing, and then the ending just, no, just I, killed you know, everything I, I think, that I, I had. I, was, I think people are going to appreciate the film for it's kind of tr it, how it is kind of unconventional in a weird way. Like it's taking characters who aren't necessarily likable and putting them in this environment. Whereas up in the air was dealing with people who you know we're getting to learn them. We're getting to, it was a it was a very good movie. I'm not going to deny. It. I, I liked it. It's probably yeah. better than this. But Wall Street Two works for me because it gives characters, especially Gordon Gecko, who I think in the end all these characters kind of have a little gecko in them. They're mm -hmm. all lying to achieve what, what they deem as truth, and that is cool. Yeah, I mean, you can't, and, I know. and I'm for originality. But yeah. and I'm, I'm actually a big advocate of originality, but well, this film works for me just for that reason. I know, but just at the end, like it's, a, it's not everybody, everybody has a little bit of gecko in them, but it also has a little bit of cheese in them. I mean, did you see yeah. that ending? No, no, that was I, just a ball. It was I, nothing. It was just. You know, and, I, and, I'm not, and I'm not denying the ending almost being oh sorrented. It's bad. It's oh, bad. It's bad. It's bad. And I think that's what kills all of our stuff. Well, well, I guess what was you is you were on you were on the see it rented say I was on the rented skip it and that ending just uh, certified it as a skip it and I just I, I don't know what it is it just does it it just seems like it's something we've already it's, seen on the news at that. I think times. it's going to be one of those underrated films by Oliver Stone. It's the same thing with W. I really like W. It's the same thing happening. It just doesn't quite grab because it's not going to be an intense pace for the mainstream audience. So I think I agree with you in that aspect is that it's going to divide audiences. Nah, yeah, no, I, but I, I just think it's grabbed by hot air. Like I just I just really don't see a reason to see this. Movie. Oh, well, I liked it.